Welcome back to another episode of the Coffee Break Podcast. I'm your host, Slim. These are my bros. Jabba. Danilo. Danilo. I'm trying. So let's shout out to Gallinari. Gallinari, exactly. Shout, it's an Italian name, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Shout, shout out to Italy. Shout out to Italy. Try, but, trying to see what fits. Yeah. You know? Yeah. When I watch this back, what I say, you know, that, that worked for me. So you're going to have a name every single week? Is that, is that the goal? Last week I didn't. Names? So I'm, I'm, I'm just trying. I'm, I hear a name. I'm going to try to spit it out, see how it feels to me, and then go with that name if it sticks. If it doesn't... How do you know it sticks, though? Huh? How do you know? If I like it from the outside. I'm a podcast viewer. I told What's you What's the deal with the Caucasian like... names, too? Like, yeah, yeah, I was about to say that. Why Danilo, couldn't you... Like, why no can't you say... in your name. Why can't you say Hakeem or something? Why yeah. do you always have to say... Tyrone. I'm not gonna Christopher. Disrespect. I'm just saying, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm noticing a trend. <laughs> Christopher. That's, you, that's are you... kind of a name you bring it up to me, bro. Yeah, it's true. I'm noticing Dealing the name. And Danilo are so separate from Christopher. They're bro. very, very Caucasian, though. I'm nah, just saying, there's a theme there. They got swag with those two names. I'm not gonna disrespect Hakeem Olajuwon by just saying Hakeem. There's other Hakeems. That's that's the that's the the greatest Hakeem what we know of. Fair. You know of. Fair. Wait, is it I better, know. Of. Is a better Hakeem out there than Hakeem? I worked Olajuwon? at Walmart with Hakeem. He's great. Better than Hakeem Olajuwon? Shout him out, bro. I mean, this is the place for it, right? Hakeem, I remember you, brother. You were in technology. Thanks for getting me that switch, brother. Salute, bro. <laughs> that's, that's the description of life. I don't know his last name, bro. Hakeem in technology. I get the salute, bro. <laughs> That's how you save people in your phone? Yeah, exactly. By their occupation? No, no, no. I save people by specific things, attributes. Okay. You slim to be. The one and only. <laughs> I'll never remove that name. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Originally for you, it was Mookie, but I know you hated that nickname. So I now I just call you Mokhtar. You don't have no nickname. Until I find the one that sticks with you, fam, yeah. I'm going to call you Christopher, fam. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher. <laughs> we're, we're all trying to find ourselves, man. Yeah, Kyrie, like, people hated on Kyrie for doing it. Why Kyrie not? Kyrie would have been a nice name to go by. Yeah. Nah, I'm, I'm not doing that. Too black for you? Huh? Too black for you? Too much melanin. <laughs> There's a fine line, you know? I'm just saying, I'm just following the theme that Come on, man. Presenting the theme. I'm just saying, I'm just bringing it up. I'm, I'm, ch- I'm just trying to find exotic, what's out there. I may, next time, maybe African name. Uh, let me cook. Stay tuned, right? Huh? We're, we're here cook. every week. We're here every yeah, week. Stay this is tuned. what you get for Stay the Coffee Break Podcast. Stay tuned. We're here every week. Come on, man. Right. We're here to present you with great conversations, great entertainment, amazing information, and Mukhtar's names. <laughs> I'm All trying right. to find myself. All right. The whole package right there. Facts. All right. I'm just yeah. saying. But anyways, we got a great show on the way. Some phenomenal topics to talk to you guys about. It's been a busy week. Facts. It's been a very entertaining week, mm-hmm. I'd say. I mean, I'm not even going to go into the sports world because that, to me, is just, it's blowing up right now. I don't know if you guys have been seeing people have been going crazy in basketball these couple of days. So, shout, out to, shout out to Luka Doncic. Shout out to Joel Embiid. Who else was involved? Freaking Cat. Cat. 62. Devin Booker. 62. We got to get some Toronto Raptors involved, man. Why, why is, we don't have anybody capable of scoring that much. What? Yeah. Do? I don't think so. Uh, do we? You're I not, think it, RJ Barrett can, get, can at least barns, get to the 50s. Man. I think to, to score... That much points, you need a three ball. He, he could shoot some. He's not, he's not a shooter. great shooter. He's not a good shooter. He could shoot something. Uh, I don't know. I think you just need to be a great scorer in every aspect to be able yeah. to score 70. You know? Like, no, you can't, we you can't have, just keep going to the We thing. have our guy, though. Scotty Barnes. He's going to lead Toronto to the next Eventually. Generation. But, you know, not now. I don't think he's at a, a point where he can go, go for it even. No, he's saying, he said eventually. Yeah, I'm just yeah, saying. Eventually, yeah, a couple years. He's our next guy. You know, he's the guy that's going to put Toronto back on the map from where we were before. You think he's going to leave if when his rookie contract is done? No. They're, bu- they're building this whole franchise around him right now. He would be dumb to leave. Unless they really just fumble like crazy in the next couple of years. Yeah. In terms of like signings and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But that's Toronto's future. As of right now for sports. Okay. But Toronto's current in music is Drake. Do we not? Mm. We all know that. Yeah. yeah. That's our guy, right? 100%. Recently, Drake has been under slander. I've, why do I say that like it's recent? Like It happens every week, my nigga. <laughs> every week he's under slander. So uh, this past week or maybe even two weeks ago, uh, there's been a video floating around online of the rapper Most Def, also Yassine known as Yasin Bey. Mm-hmm. Uh, on an interview with uh, with somebody, I think it was like some radio show or something. I think it was a British, was it a British have, platform? Probably I don't know like what that. platform it was, but shout out to them. It looked pretty mm-hmm. solid. Um, and they asked him about Drake's music, right? And just for context, Yasin Bey, he's a very lyrical based rapper from the 2000s, right? So he's very for the culture, the rap culture, hip hop community. Um, he lives and breeds to push 
the culture forward, for lack of a better term. Black right? star. Black star, right? Mm. So he's all about having a message in music, right? And progressing it for the better. And he was asked about Drake's music. And it sort of was, his response was that Drake makes music for shopping. His music is made for, it's like Target, he said. His, his, his analogy of it was like, it's like Target. They have pretty much everything, but it's not, the way I took it was he was, he was saying it's not a specialty store. You know, it's just kind of like a for everyone, everyone can enjoy this. Um, and it kind of gets you in the mode to consume, you know? Yeah. Um, and the internet went crazy. As usual, right? Yeah. They were bringing up Drake's history, his music history, all the hits he's had over the years. I mean, um, the presentation he's brought, the new outlook he's brought to the hip hop community and the hip hop culture. And the, I would say that the conversation was very, very split in yeah. this one. And a lot of people were saying that that's not true. Um, Drake has had a lot of substance in his music, maybe not as recent, but for the most part, he's been kind of the leader in the generational shift of where hip-hop was and, yeah. and, and, and where it is now. So that's been the, uh, the recent outrage around Drake this week. You know, there'll probably be something else next week, man, when he gets a, another tattoo saying some weird shit on him or some shit. Sweet. I need a Max Sweet. <laughs> yo, that, yo, that one stream killed me, man. He has so, so many quotables, man. So many quotables. Need, he had a hat too. You oh like my god! He knew it was gonna go fire. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was ready. He had the hat. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I saw the hats, and they're kind of fire. Wow. He has the I need the Max Ween in a hat, in a hat form. Yeah. But I'm not gonna lie. It says steak on the side of it. So I'm like, yo, I don't want to look like a fucking gambler. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> down bad. I paid my last dollar for this. You know, so it's like, okay, I, I can't even be doing all that, but. But yeah, that's been the outrage. I want to hear your guys' opinion. Do you guys think that Drake's music is shopping music or is it like kind of like background music? Is there no substance to it? What do you guys think? We're, t- we're from Toronto, so we got def- to defend our name. I have a, I have a point to make, fam. Okay. <clears throat> so do I agree that Drake's music recently doesn't have a lot of substance? You could make a case for that. I'm not saying, I'm not saying most stuff was wrong in that regard, but to say that Drake in general makes music for Target and just makes music for the masses. I don't entirely agree with that. I think Drake is the algorithm. Like he has mastered the internet. And by doing that, that means he knows what will go viral. He knows what type of music to create. He knows how to always make an adjustment in order to be in the media's eye, right? So of course that he's going to make adjustments to his music that some people may not be so keen with. But that's the game at this point. If you like, I think Drake has just such a control on how he, like the way that he creates music that a lot of people who are fans of his original music are like, why are you making it like this? You know? And I also think this is a case of older heads not liking new stuff. Like, you know, like the old basketball heads that are like, oh, Joel Embiid, why are you doing this? Like, you know, Charles Barkley, when he talks smack about like Kevin Durant and stuff like that. Yeah. I think it's a classic case of older people not liking what the newer generation is putting out and just saying, back in my day, we used to do it like this. Things evolve. Music evolves. Everything progresses forward, right? Mm-hmm. Just because I'm not taking anything away from old stuff, just because music isn't the same as the way it was before, it doesn't mean the quality of the music has gone down. It just means that music has shifted in a new direction, you know? Yeah. And for Drake to always know what that direction is going and always be able to adjust himself and make great music i love i love drake he's always my number one in apple music right for him to always make that adjustment and still make great music in my opinion i think that just shows how amazing he is as a artist and you know what to add to that point and phenomenal way of describing that actually but to add to that point most def is wrong because just because drake is the biggest artist out doesn't mean he has to be the guy that's you know, putting a message out in his songs. That's not, he's not the, de- he doesn't, his music is not the only music out that defines hip hop today. There, we still have Kendrick Lamar. We yeah. still have J. Cole. You know, like we still have the people that have messages in their music, people that have substance in their, in their rap lyrics and whatnot. And just because they're not selling as good as Drake doesn't make them any less, you know? They're still what, the aspect of hip hop that most Def is talking about, in my opinion, is still around. It's just not the most popular today. Yeah. And that's probably where the bitterness is coming from. It's almost as if it's kind of jealousy, to be honest with you. Because it's like, yeah. he, thinks it, he thinks that, to, in my perspective, I think that he's looking at it like the right thing to do is to be to pushing 
is to be pushing the culture forward with progressive music rather than substanceless music for just for the fact of relevancy, mm -hmm. you know? And that's not like, to be honest with you, I don't think that Drake has been doing that for the majority of his career. Like you said, you can make the case that he's probably trying to stay relevant now with his music, with how he's kind of, you know, uh, bringing out new or kind of like staying close to trends and what's happening and just figuring out how to go viral and those things. Mm -hmm. I think he's mastered that side of music. But when it comes to the, the actual context and the substance of music, he's had a history of that. Yeah. Probably 10 years of that earlier before he became like, you know, the guy he is now. Yeah. He's had, he's already done that, you know? So, and nobody has had the length or the longevity that he has, he's had in music. <clears throat> so it's, I feel like it's only, it, it makes sense for somebody to want to change or shift the way they do things to stay, you know, in people's lives. You know, yeah. I think that that's kind of the, the main goal for Drake right now is to stay in people's lives and make music that's relevant for what people are going through today. Yeah. And that, you know, doesn't involve some of the progressiveness in, in the culture that most deaf would want. So one, one more thing to add to that. I think the best comparison for Drake is LeBron. When LeBron came into the league 2003, he played a specific way. And that way was successful during that time period, right? And then how many times in LeBron's career did the NBA shift to a new direction? It became like the, the, the place that he was in, like the power forward league, like the big man league. And then it went to the, the shooting man league, like, LeBron, similar to Drake, has always been able to change their ability in order to be successful in the industry that they're in, right? right? And the longevity aspect of it is knowing what's going to happen and knowing what adjustments you have to make in order to stay at number one. I think that's why Drake and uh, LeBron are such good comparisons because you have to be able to move. Like, li life is not stagnant. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to adjust to whatever happens in this way and that way in order to still remain number one and similar to lebron i don't know how drake has been doing it now for almost 15 years or so right ever since i was like in grade six or something but drake similar to lebron are just great at their longevity because they have like this eye of knowing what's coming and going up to date with that you know yeah. you, could even make make, you could even make the argument that drake is better than lebron in that sense because lebron isn't the best player in the nba right now sure yeah and drake is the best rapper or like the most successful rapper out right now, the most relevant rapper out right now. So he's stayed number one. But you could still, LeBron's the most marketable. And I think that's where Drake and Maybe, shopping, uh, the target music is people are more marketable than people. But I just I define, think, I feel like I define success in rap as how much you're selling and how much your uh, numbers come back for, right? It all plays in the same thing. I don't, I don't think it's, Jealousy. I think the, the girl specifically asked about Drake too, right? Yeah. She didn't ask about like the state of hip hop or no, no, no. who's leading anything. She specifically asked about Drake and like most deaf does come from. I was watching a clip of him from a, a film about Cypher. And he comes from that backpack era of rap where it's not, they're not street guys, but they're talking about a variety of things like the tribes, like the, um, the Black Star Talib Kweli as well. Yep. But he, I don't, I don't see as jealousy. I see as there's no variety in the state, and Jake Drake probably represents that for him, where the faces of hip hop are just a lot of the marketable people are a lot of the same thing, whereas the people that talk to uh, in that similar tone and follow that wave of Drake, J Cole and Kendrick, as you mentioned earlier, I don't think they're as marketable. I don't think they're as seen as the face even though as hip-hop fans we see them as the face the other people that are providing them the ad money i don't think they see them as much as the face because drake is willing to be out there drake's willing to be on every stream and constantly be a part of every wave and things like that and i can't say it's it's you can take it as a compliment if you want it just all depends on it just gives them a little bit of ammo but i don't think this is a negative thing that he said though i don't really? see it as jealousy though really i just see it as that's what it is right now it's just a safe time in music where it's easier for people to make certain type of this type of music to get the money in to get not speak about anything but a lot of people you appeal to and like jordan said uh, republicans buy sneakers too republicans buy sneakers too no but i, I get you the point that you're making mm-hmm but to say that all of Jake's music doesn't have substance or doesn't have like 
what people are looking for, I yeah. disagree with. Because, sure, like, you know that big album that came out recently? Which one was it? The, for All the Dogs? Yeah, For All the Dogs. I'm not going to lie, that album was not for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I liked a couple of tracks, but it's not one that I'll just go back to regularly, right? However, the one that he dropped, like, the five after that, I very much fucked with that because it was really great, you know? Because he was actually talking, there was music where he was talking about um, why people think I can't, or like, I can't rap like how I used to. I can't do this like how I used to. And it was like he was getting into the topics and the meat of a lot of controversy that for a lot of years he didn't really talk about, right? So I, I don't, I find it very interesting that some people point that, oh, this song here, this song there. But when you go into like his actual catalog of what yeah. he actually dropped recently, for the most part, I like to believe that there is a lot of quality in it. You know, I just think people see what the songs that are on the billboard and just be like, oh, that doesn't really have much, you know? I disagree though, man, because like, as a, I, I would consider myself a fan of Drake's music, right? For a long time. And mm -hmm. the, sub the substance and the quality in which of what he's talking about has decreased significantly, in my opinion. You brought up a good point about the album that dropped after For All the Dogs. Yeah. I listened to that. And I think that's some of the greatest rapping ability uh -huh. that I've seen from Drake in the last recent years. But when it goes back to the substance of what he's talking about, I couldn't care less about any of it, you know? And it, that's just a personal opinion it's of because mine. because you couldn't uh, relate to it? Or Not necessarily even relate to it, but it was, it was just... It was very it was very specific about Drake and his career and proving the haters wrong. You know, it was very much a response response rap. Yeah. You know, a lot of people criticizing him for his lack of ability to make rap music that's yeah. good these days. You know, and then he comes back and he even said he made that project in what five days or some shit like that. And that to me shows the ability. That's like to go and sit down in a room and say, "Yo, I'm gonna make a very well written rap song." is hard to do and he's mastered that skill but what he's rapping about to me i think for the for the for the last couple of years or so it's just been kind of like regurgitating shit you know like i'm the great i'm the greatest i'm the goat this is why you guys aren't it my life is better than yours and it's like i can understand i can see why somebody like most deaf would be like that's not that's not substance that's not actual like there's no purpose in that it's very just you know it's very like that's where the target um shopping music kind of comes into the, the, the discussion that example to me shows that most deaf doesn't really not necessarily care but he doesn't see what drake talks about as relevant you know and that's an opinion-based thing i think to be honest with you like you were saying it's what's marketable today you know and drake spends a lot of time focusing on how to market himself in his while making music yeah. as opposed to making something that's either personal or like you know down to earth for the culture or something progressive you know mm -hmm. it's what you're able to market these days and, and to be I, honest with you that's uh sorry to cut you yeah, I, nothing i i don't get the 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 judge the the jealousy and the the, the hate that people think that it's coming from because mm -hmm. he just spoke specifically spoke about this time in drake's career i don't think he drug, spoke about drake's career in general i think he just spoke about right now what drake and his music represent and he's a, a practitioner that's been doing this for a while, most deaf. Mm -hmm. So he's able, just like some of the basketball players, like KG, he's not, we don't see him as a hater for basketball players of this era, but he is able to give an objective opinion on how these guys play and how certain guys play because he does show some love. We don't hear enough from most deaf to see who he shows love to, but we don't hear rappers today say, oh, like I ran into most deaf and he was, gave me, brushed me off or, I run and he gave me this certain thing. So I that's why I can he can take it as a compliment if he wants to, but I want to ask you like the the five after that he dropped after what was it the most dog? For all the that, dogs. Uh what like what did you remember from that from that five uh, um, track album? There was one so the two the two favorites that are on constant replay for me is I forgot the name of them, but one where he's addressing people saying he can't rap like the trick that used to rap mm -hmm. and he's I think the the bars that he's been in that he was like, I don't need to because I'm I'm getting better as a rapper. I'm not going to be the same person I was when I was 20. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm 30, 30 plus and I'm still producing great music. That's That was kind of the uh, the message behind that one. The second one was, um, I'm not going to be played by any woman. Um, and I, I understand what you mean. It's not a lot of substance, but he's like, like I'm I'm trying to see a change in the way that I view women. And I'm not trying to go for the same woman I went for in the past. And he's trying to talk about his journey with like his relationships and stuff, you know? 
So those are the two ones where it's kind of like he could have went the easy route, put 21 Savage on that and just made like a, a good pop song, you know? But I think the fact that he took time to actually talk about things that are happening in his life and the demons that he's facing in his head, I think that's that shows value in the music that he produces, you know? Mm. Because he could have went the easy route, put put like 21 on that or put well, he like... Did. Got the he whole had an album. First. Yeah, yeah that was the easy road. He went, <laughs> no, and then the criticism led there, to the. There's the avenues that he takes where he. There's times where he takes the the road less walked. Where for him, that's doing rap music because he mm-hmm. could have easily just done a little hum on that and would have went top 100 or not have done anything. Yeah, and still been relevant. But mm-hmm. the fact that he's constantly producing these songs and at times I understand where there's not a lot of message behind it, just for you to kind of get get it the feel. But there are other times where you're just listening and like, damn, I I really. I relate to that, you know? I would agree. I mean, I'll, I'll say this too to, to kind of put a bow on this conversation. It's a very interesting time for rap music right now, hip-hop music specifically, because you have guys like Drake. We don't know, we've, we've never really seen longevity like this for somebody, right? And we've never really seen kind of, and, and honestly speaking, to be honest with you, these days I feel like rap is so, rappers come and go so much quicker that the fact that Drake is been here this long this relevant is kind of wild you know what i mean like think about the rappers from just like five years ago that aren't making any noise right now anymore that had hits like super mega mega hits you know like it's just an interesting time in rap right and and to kind of segue this conversation recently there's been a phenomenon of children rappers 10 and below 10 ages 10 and below Mm -hmm. that are going viral i don't know if you guys heard about this new rapper his name is lil rt yeah he was recently on Kai Sinat's stream, the little kid that, that was going viral with him on stream a couple months ago. That kid, let me find out. Let me see what country or what city he's from first. But he's nine years old. He has a hit song going out right now. It's called 60 Miles. And in that song, he's talking about running away from police. He's talking about spraying his ops with 100 round bullets. Damn. He's talking about he's talking about doing sexual acts with women. He's nine years old, mind you, right? Mm-hmm. And he is famous, famous. When I say famous, I mean, A, his video on YouTube has six million views, yeah. a lot of supporters, a, a shit ton of supporters, on top of the fact that he's doing shows. Really? He's going to venue, from venue to venue, rapping the song explicitly mm. to kids, to other children. He's performing at schools? He's performing at kids' birthday parties and like, private events that their parents are hosting right my question is for you what do we think of the parents of these these rappers and uh, them allowing their kids to get involved with this at this young of an age like of course they're they're successful they're getting a lot of money out of it because this kid is famous now but where does that leave morality for society today if people are doing that to their children i think the parents feel that kid bro 100 percent. i think the fact that because you know, my thing is, subhanAllah, like, like, I understand it's funny. It's <laughs> funny. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to articulate myself. Yeah. yeah. I understand that it's funny. It, it, the reason why it's viral is because it's a nine-year-old kid talking about grown people stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you wouldn't expect a nine-year-old kid to be talking about women, guns, drugs. You'd expect them to be talking about, like, Pokemon, you right. know? Like, and for, and I understand it's the kid doing it, but in reality, it's the parents that are pushing that to happen. Because at nine years old, your parents control everything in your life, realistically, yeah. you know? So I think the parents fail that kid by allowing him the avenue of pursuing this type of music at this young of an age. And mm. it's not like he writes his own lyrics. <laughs> That's you true, right? That. He doesn't know any. I don't even think he knows what he's saying, bro. His dad real. is probably saying, "Yo, yo, this probably sounds good." <laughs> yo, let's talk about that woman right there. Yeah, like man. I think the fact that his parents are pushing this, and probably when they saw that first paycheck, they're like, "Yo, this is my way out of the, or whatever it, dilemma that I'm in." So now they're pushing the kid to do more and more and engage in more of this activity, but in reality, it's like I understand right now it's funny, but eventually when the kid grows up. This may have negative aspects on his character. This may have negative aspects about his development and overall who he is as a person. Facts, facts. You're wrong. And to be honest with you, I'm just looking at his, his description right here on Google. Lil RT born June 3rd, 2014. 20, 2014. Nine years old. Wow, that was you graduated high school. <laughs> There's a rapper that's hot right now that's born the year we graduated high school. That's fucking insane. Anyways, 
His height? Two foot five. He's a, he, that's <laughs> no, impossible. he's two that's foot impossible. five. That's impossible. That's, what it, that's what it says. Two my, foot five. That's probably feet, bro. I mean, like... Uh, two foot five inches. That's, a, <laughs> that's impossible. That's he would be... Relationship status, single. <laughs> Net worth $100,000. Uh, that's pretty great for a kid. That's insane. I mean, the kid, I mean, success-wise, monetary-wise, yeah, he's doing well. He's probably going to have, if, he, if they were to invest in him right from here on out with the money that they've made, yeah, he could probably have a great future. But where he's headed right now, in my opinion, dead or in jail. I'm can so we, sorry to say that. Yeah, can we even say it's the parents, though? Because some immigrant parents or some parents that are not on the internet like that, that work, don't they don't know what their kids are all up on. Well, he's nine That's years the old. Older, he's nine years no, old. No, but these parents could be like in the house, maintaining the house and not be on the internet like that to know this is what my child's doing. A he's lot doing of shows though. A lot of children are no, but I'm saying when he was starting up, now they're probably all aware and they're probably we don't know in the background if they're trying to fight this. Mm-hmm. But initially they could be in the house maintaining the house and they're he's out with his cousins or his brothers or whoever in the neighborhood doing this and then got attention and then the parents now it's too late but they're trying to fight this but we can't we can't blame it's them off top of no i said it's too late nine. that he's doing shows already but they're trying to fight this and who knows the parents what have, they try to sign them i, I, I find it away, i very i find it very hard to believe that the parents relate to this because the kid's nine years old fam like yeah he, we, he's asking them like, when can i have my snack you know, like we can't, we can't blame them. We don't nine know. Nine years old. I, I, I don't know their story. Crazy. I can. It's safe to assume that the, the parents are heavily involved yeah. in this. It's safe to assume that because of the age, just because of the age. Yeah. Just think Who's about it. Who's driving in places? That's what I'm yeah. saying. That's older cousins and brothers, and they're not telling the parents. Yeah. They That's could be they potentially mean? in the. I'm saying at first, we don't know how. So how when you was eight. How no? We don't know. Seven. No, no, it's, we don't know. It's fine if at first yeah. you didn't know. I get it. Maybe yeah, I, like, I agree with that. But at some point, you had to point, you yeah. had to dabble they, your they feet and on. understand what's happening. Mm. And you, as a parent, chose to look the other way. They caught on. <laughs> it's not unforeseen, though. No. Well, they caught on. No, freaking ch- child actors have been going through this for generations. Now. I think it's different with rappers though, because what they're giving these the ammo they're giving this kid to mm-hmm. say to other people, it, I don't think he's gonna have a real like good sense of right from wrong you know he's saying crazy things he's talking about murder he's talking about um uh, breaking the law he's talking mm-hmm. about doing these sexual acts like he's nine years old i don't think he's gonna have any real realization of the things that he's being exposed to once once it gets time to these yeah. like you know these ages he's, where a low Wayne. he's gonna be a little maybe even like yeah Lil wayne's a great example yeah. like he's a very out of touch person in society, if you really think about it. He's in the Hot Boys, what, like 13, 14? 13 years old, or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah but Lil Wayne is just one of a kind. I think I think it's a little different because Lil Wayne is one of the most talented individuals when it comes yeah, to Yeah, but look at him, bro. <laughs> look at what I'm saying. I think it's a little different to compare that gem in like in a situation, but it's not like his record proved that he was gonna go that route, you know? You I mean? think this boy. This boy, I don't think... Wait, what do you mean? I need to, I need to know what you're At saying. At the beginning, what was Lil Wayne talking about? At the very beginning of his music. It's the same thing. He's talking about bitches. He's talking about getting money. He's talking about, you know, being in the... At 13 or 14, though? Yeah. Okay, correct. He was in the Hot Boys. I'm popular opinion. I'm popular opinion. I think at 14, you start to understand stuff. I'm not saying you understand the world, but you start understanding what you're saying and the decisions that you're making. And you understand the impact of what that has on you. Right. At nine years old, my nigga, you're still in elementary school. Right. You're in grade four. Okay. In grade four... You just see what's, how people react to certain things you do, and you do that more. And it's, it's what your parents or the people around you say. Oh, my say. God. He's in grade four. Yeah. What am I saying? Oh. Exactly. In, in 13 or 14, fam, at least oh you're God. in, what is it? You're in grade eight? Grade seven. Seven, eight. Oh, middle school. I understood wrong from right from that age. That's true. But, but it's grade not... four, I was reactive. I was just waiting to see how people reacted to what my actions and depending on if it was like a positive reaction, I do that more. If it's a negative reaction, I do that less, right? So he's, in my opinion, what he's, what's happening is he's being congratulated for what he's doing. He's, and because the people around him are terrible. And now that he's doing that more, he assuming that that's great, you mm-hmm. know? But when you're 13 or 14, I think you have a better grasp of life. But it's not necessarily about the kids. It's not on the kids, neither of them. They're both ignorant at that age. They're just being influenced. That's the problem here. It's not necessarily how they're receiving it or what age they are, how they receive it. It's the influence that they have. That is that right or wrong? That's wrong to me. You know? But when it's a little old. Like, I mean, like... Still, you don't want... Five years of development in the, in the brain is a little different from nine. I think when you're single digits in age, you don't know life. Yeah. <laughs> when you're single digits... You don't digits know life at 14 either, though. 
I think you have a good grasp of like the idea of what life is. You, I'm not saying you consolidated your idea as to what your belief system is. Yeah. But you know things. 14, what, grade 7, I knew stuff. What you like, you don't know much about what the outside world is, though. You know I what your favorite are. You can have are. a very serious conversation with a 14-year-old. You can, but it's not going to go far, though. I disagree. I, 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 I think you're under. Just for clarity in this conversation, Lil Wayne began his rap career at age 12 in 1995. And as well started drinking lean at age 12 in yeah, 1995. Yeah, <laughs> so you don't know right from wrong, bro. Like that, that's, no, 12, that theory is retarded. 12 bro. is a little different. I don't know, man. I think you're just, you're so beyond influential before the ages of 18 that no matter what, you're going to have a, a strange life if you're introduced to this type of stuff early on, no matter what. I think it's probably way worse at nine. That's what I'm yeah, but it's not. You can't give this guy a cosign and this guy say what he's doing is wrong or what the people are doing around him is wrong. That's that's the point I'm trying to make. Because we're looking. Lil at the, Wayne didn't English turn out. More. Lil Wayne did not turn out right to me. Fourteen was different. When Lil you said Wayne, fourteen. Yeah, I was fine with that. But now that you said twelve, twelve is preteen, bro. You're not. You're not even. You don't have much development going. But my on. thing is it's still grade five. That two years, he, his brain fully developed, and he was middle school changes niggas, bro. <laughs> I was a different nigga from grade five and grade you seven. You keep putting yourself in this, like, this I is what I would have did. Like, you're not a little leaf, fam. No, but I'm telling you, developing wise, I was a different person from grade Bro, five to grade eight. Everybody's different, man. Yeah. There's nuance. This guy was in a gang. Like, uh, who's in a gang? Lil Wayne. Different. He's a different, different guy. You're Take yourself out of the scenario, man. So, yeah, I couldn't be in a gang? Nah, nah you? you? <laughs> absolutely not, man. Why absolutely, can't I be in a gang? Absolutely not. Man. Why can't I be in a gang, bro? The only gang you're in is in COD, fam. <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's it that's the only time you're spraying 100 rounds I hit you cause it's true bro but that's fine I'm in that gang too bro hell yeah, oh, yeah man appreciate. God for break podcast nah, catch us in that's COD that's two thirds catch us in COD <laughs> bro call of duty all the way but no actually yeah, before we wrap up this conversation one thing I wanted to ask you guys who do you think is worse in this scenario who do you think is more to who is more the villain is it the the, the labels and the executives that are putting money behind these people yeah. or is it the parents it's the parents because the labels, labels are trash wherever you go. They're, they're just going to look for a way to extort money out of you. That's, that's dumb. They don't care about the person. They care about what the person can produce. So the labels are expected to be yeah, evil? Yeah, they are. It's the parents that are supposed to shield you from this. You know, be like, I don't want my son or my daughter or anything to go through that, you know? But the parents saw the opportunity. They saw the money. They saw the currency and were like, yo. It's fine if he turns out messed up. I just up. think it's a little weird, though, because the reason why I even brought this conversation up is because my little bro, he was on Apple Music and they were, they were promoting Lil RT like crazy, like front page, go check this out. Like it was like they were trying to push him towards that, you know? And this is a nine-year-old. I'm thinking to myself, like mm -hmm. the least they could do is not like have him this up in front of people's faces on the algorithm, you know? Like I was thinking morality is at least somewhat there yeah. in these companies, but not at all. All not record either. labels are media companies, though. Yeah, every they're all intertwined. They really yeah. don't give a shit. No, that what, what was that? That was that white girl in Toronto, the the little girl that one that died a few a few years ago. Little Debbie. That's all. Little Debbie. Oof. That was the front page of Toronto for a while, until like she seen her end, and like people blaming the blogs, people blaming all this other stuff. Their girl was homeless, like. You can't, these, these are media companies at the end of the day, so anything for a buck, that's not their child. You hear all these IT and AI guys talking about Google and all these big companies that they work for. They say, oh, my ch child does not touch any of that. I keep my child from, from phones. I keep my child from social media. And, but they're a part of the people that are developing all these products to put it even more in front of other children. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Interesting time we're living in right now, man. We got nine-year-old rappers, bro. Successful nine-year-old rappers. Right, Lil Mouse. Lil Mouse, Mouse, man. Shout out to Lil Mouse. Yeah. But they don't of these guys really make it far other than Lil Wayne. You really think about it. Because Lil Wayne was actually... Child rappers? Yeah. Bow Wow. Another one. Yeah. Bow Wow. He knows his history. When it comes to rap, hip-hop... I think it was different. I can't, I I can't argue with it. different way guy. back. I don't think there's any generation of kids that start off as a rapper in today's world and keep going. Like I know, like that's what I, that's the point I was making. Yeah, yeah. like I mean, little, like that's the nineties or the early two thousands, right? No, but there was Little Mouse like ten years ago. Little Mouse ten years and ago. Who else? What was that guy from uh, Young Money? Little Twist. Remember like, him? I don't. I, I don't know if he became like he a pursued. He pursued rapper. rapping. He pursued rapping after that. 
He no, but on, on his own, yeah. I don't yeah. think he stood stood alone. I think it was just Young Money and then... No, no, no. He was Chinatown. making music on his own. And he still does today. But he just didn't translate. Mm. And you're he was, right. He was on uh, Love and Hip Hop or some shit like that. That's where I saw him recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're right. Yeah. yeah. So I think he's you, just harder. So if your kid had bars at nine years old... It's about depending on what they're talking about. I'm not going to let my kid talk about stupid shit at that age. What, what am I? Well, okay, hear me out. Hear me out. Hear, <laughs> like, me out. hear me out. Hear me out. Let me paint, I'm not be a let me paint the dad. picture for you. Let me paint the picture for you, both of you guys. Your kid is a great freestyler, okay. right? Yeah. Fantastic freestyler, right? Yeah. But you know that to get successful in rap, you got to talk about some dirty shit. Would you let him freestyle about some wild shit? No. Just to see if he can go? No. I wouldn't. Break, break and I, I disagree with the premise of what you said. Mm. You To make a big in rap, you don't need to say disgusting stuff. Give me an example. There's this really popular TikToker. I, off the top of my head, I forgot his name. But I think it's something McKay or something. But his whole thing is... White or black? He's white. Oh, the one from Canada. Connor Price? No, no, no. But he, he's, he's a freestyler. He's a freestyler. So what he does is he goes on these lives and... He, have, like, have, he raps for like an hour straight and people in the comments that's a gimmick that's not a rapper what do you mean that's a guy who's just showing no, like, but he's he, on America's Got Talent you know like no, that's, no, no, that's not he's rapping actually, he's actually rapping and then he goes he, like he's been on that's shows a gimmick, he's been on bro. everything that's but like he actually guy, has music that's like the world record for f- most amount of threes in a row but he, like he obviously has, that guy's not gonna bang with Steph he, Curry at a three point shootout he has music he's just that's his thing because people started knowing about him like that but he is translating to his actual music it's just like that's an ability that he has to free. Does he have a hit song? Off top, I don't know him like that. I just know that he has millions of followers. He, he's been on many talk shows. I just think to have a hit song, you got to talk about some dirty stuff. I don't think so. I just, that's no, just but that guy, I, I don't, so. he may run into some difficulty actually. There's no, he's just like battle rappers and, and trying to make there's no lane. rappers. There's no lane for that. There's, they, they, he's a billionaire. When I'm talking about becoming successful as a touring. Like popular billboard yeah, have, rapper. having an audience. I don't know if I agree with that. Like, because yeah, on TikTok, battle rappers are now other people, like yeah. people that come from other worlds, trying to become rappers. There's probably anomalies out there, but I don't think there's much of them that succeed becoming actual rappers. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I entirely agree with you guys saying that you have to wrap up with certain stuff to be successful. No, nah, that's not what I'm but saying. That's what I'm saying. saying. No, I get what you're saying, but to to back to the scenario. That's a theory. Mm-hmm. I have. Back to the scenario. I, that's not happening. If my, you're not, that's not, I'm not. At nine years old, it's too early. I'm not, like, Way too early. I don't disagree with them doing that, mm-hmm. but under my roof, under my like care, I'm not. It is my job to make sure you don't turn out messed up. So you tell them kick rocks? No, 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 no. I mean, like, you're not going to do that under my roof. <laughs> Eventually, when you own your own place, do whatever you want. You're an adult. Yeah. You know? But right now, while I take care of you, while I house you, while I take care of your development, I'm not going to let you in any shape or form go down the wrong path and i think even if he was to be, become successful i don't think he would want like it's it's alluring you know it's very like the allure of being like this pop artist but the things that come with it the negative things i don't want my son or my daughter to have to deal with that scrutiny at that young of an age mm-hmm. you know Fair. that's just me no you're, that's uh, you're gonna be a great dad someday that's what Allah. i do yeah you're gonna be a great dad. all the like, majority of the actors from you remember that show a different stroke no you don't remember? You guys remember that? That's from the seventies, bro. Eighties, bro. Bro, how old are you, Gross. fam? Uh, how, how? Gary Coleman. See, we're, we're the same age, right? <laughs> are we yeah, all? No, we're we're, we're all ninety six. Uh, the fact that I know ninety six comics, that's that's an accomplishment. Gary I know Gary yeah, Coleman. I know him. I even know the show Different Strokes, but it's the fact that you're bringing that up. I know yeah. what you're saying, but it's like, how do you? I how do you know that? I, I watched that show. I watched that show to completion, but you're, you're an interesting two of the three guy, children man. off that show died young. Okay. So that's the, Gary Coleman, I think, was like, what, 40s? Yeah, he died, he died in like, what, 2013? Yeah. 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 So that's, but that's child actors run into some issues, though. I think every child actor has problems. I think the only ones that didn't turn out bad are the, the Sprouse brothers. The Dylan and Cole Sprouse, is that their name? Yeah. The twins. Like, mm-hmm. they actually went to college. Like, they're real people in in society yeah. compared to like what Selena Gomez went through, what Justin Bieber went through, what Miley Cyrus went through, you know? But they were in the music industry compared to these guys who are just... I, they I started think, off with sitcoms, brother. No, they all did, but they doubled... They were actors and musicians at the same time, so they're in 
No, but they, they had world. the choice to go. Okay, I agree with you. But they mm-hmm. had the choice to become an artist. They were being pushed by a label. Originally, they could have kept going with Wizards of Waverly Place, Hannah Montana, Justin Bieber, doing that YouTube crap. What <laughs> YouTube crap? I don't know. He sounds so salty when you say anything. <laughs> like, what the hell? Like, what be happy for them? I, just, I love Justin Bieber. No, nah, Justin YouTube Bieber crap. ruined people, though. That. The people that, that didn't have that flowing hair. That was a whole era of people trying to do this to the whip. <laughs> I tried to do that once. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I tried to do that one. Your hair is soft enough to get that off, though. Yeah. No, that's I straightened my hair one time. No way, did you? Emo, emo, emo drama? <laughs> Why do I have to live this life? That was I'm you. never gonna do that. I'm not, I don't look good with straight hair. No. I don't look good with straight hair. Well, I tried to Jimmy Butler. In. Oh, yeah. Yo, I didn't look like Jimmy Butler. Still. You should have taken a photo, man. Nah, I'm good. Never. You should have taken a photo. I'll never give you guys that type of avalanche. Your sisters dude. have those photos, don't they? You do still, they do. You'll never see it. You never see the light of day. I will leave. But nah. anyway, I mean, since we're talking about marketing, I think with the. Um, with this child rappers or just even just the rap generation today, it is kind of it's it's easy to say that these companies are doing the best that they can to market negativity, right? But on the flip side of that, I think that product of product marketing is thriving right now. And I'll give you an example of that. You guys have heard of the Stanley mugs? Yeah. The Stanley mugs are what they are, they're just they're travel size thermoses, right? That for years, this company was, I think, founded in like 1915 or something like that. They're years old. Maybe, maybe I, I might be, I might be overestimating the date, but they're a very, they're a company that's been around for a long time. They've been making travel mugs and their specialty is like they're indestructible. They can survive all this, like a lot of heat and a lot of cold temperatures and they're very built travel mugs, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're called Stanley Cups, right? Stanley Cup. Why did that just click right now? The NHL Cup, Stanley Cup. Come on, brother. I'm an idiot, right man. Now, man. I'm an idiot, <laughs> that right man. Now. <laughs> I'm a zombie, bro. Oh, my God. That just completely went over my head. Cool. Wow. Okay. Let's cut that out. <laughs> or not. But uh, no, so they've been, they've been recently resurfacing in the pop culture world mm-hmm. as opposed to like the trucking community, which they've been a standard in for like decades, you know, mm-hmm. all the, uh, the trans the transportation people, the people that are in like locomotives, trucking, I mean, any type of transportation that you work or any type of like hard labor you work, you would have been familiar with the Stanley Mug. Yeah. Until a couple of years ago when they, re- they did a rebrand. They pretty much surged their entire marketing team, hired one guy, and this guy came from Crocs. That's the beauty of what's going on with Stanley right now is that Crocs originally used to be a joke of a shoe. Yeah. Nobody used to rock with Crocs. People were like, yo, you're just an idiot for wearing Crocs. It was like the butt of the jokes. This guy, I'm, I'm not too sure what his name is. Let me just find his name real quick. But while you're looking for that, I have three Crocs. Like, yeah. I, I am I'm one of those people that market for the work podcast. On. Before. <laughs> like, they, like, legit, in 2023, my go-to shoe was my Croc. Yeah. Because it's so comfortable. So many colors. <laughs> like, <laughs> What appealed to you? What oh, did, because did it's, it's like, because I like the way one it looks because they, they have, have a, we get some money off. Let this. me, let me, let me <laughs> can I do a sponsor? Yeah, Crocs? Yeah, I got, I got <laughs> hey Crocs, listen to me. I have three of your shoes. I love how not only it looks great, but it feels great. <laughs> and not only that, but there's one thing about Crocs, bro. That okay. It, it could be a casual shoe yeah. or, you, or you can run on a treadmill with them, you know? Yeah. Like it could be one of the, you, like you pick your poison, you know what I mean? It's like the cars, they try to they try to ting, go in the water. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I see you. That's what I'm saying. I see you. That's what I'm saying. I see you. That's what I'm saying. Tell, I'm tell saying them the cross, first thing. If you guys want to put a sponsorship on the Coffee Break podcast, so I'll wear them every day for 2024. We you know? need them. We need them. 100%. We need them. We need Brock the custom Echoes, crop. the ones with the little stickers on there, bro. I'll, <gasps> wear, I'll wear it, you know? And you too? I'm not a croc wearer, but I'll try to think. <laughs> That's all I need to hear, I'll, bro. I'll try to think. That's all I need to hear. But the price has just gone up. I'll try to think. Oh, they're also cheap too, eh? Inexpensive. Yeah, not talking about cheap. our price. Oh, yeah, the price for us. Eh? Yes. 100%. But I'm talking about Crocs themselves. Exactly. Right? You guys got the Coffee Break podcast early on. Yeah, Come on, no? Like, they probably take like $2 to make it. Eh? <laughs> and sell it for like 80 bucks. The Crocs, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they sell it for like 80 bucks. So, okay. Mar- okay. A little information about company Stanley, right? In 2016, they made $70 million gross. Oh. The year 2016. Which is a good year. $70 million? $70 million off of the travel month. Yeah, that's best. In 2022, yeah. 
They made seven hundred fifty million dollars. They made it. Got a hundred percent. The last thousand. Was it off that girl's video? The one. Oh, let, the me, car- let me let me finish what I'm saying. Yeah. So that jump was started because in 2019 they brought on their new president of marketing. His name is Terrence Riley. He worked for 12 years with the company Crocs, where he led the strategy that turned their shoes into the hottest brand on the market, pretty much, right? And you know what he did to change that for the Crocs? Mm -hmm. He added colors. Originally, Crocs were just plain, natural, black, white, gray. And then he came on board and said, we're going to make every color known to man. That's what I said. Remember when I was yeah. saying, I was like, yo, they're colorful. <laughs> he spoke to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm reading this right here. Listen, I'm reading, I'm reading this right here. I'm reading this right here. Then he came, he came, it was brought, brought on to Stanley in 2019. And first thing he did origin, uh, initially when he came on board was add colorways. Yeah. So they added so many colorways. They've done a lot of collaborations since then with a lot of companies where they're putting their designs on cups and they have just thrived like crazy. So much so to the point where now people, as a marketing strategy, are trying to test the durability of the cups. And this all started because there was one video that went viral where a woman, her Stanley cup was in her car and her car unexpectedly got on fire. She got out, she was able to evacuate and the car blew up. And then when the police and the firefighters came and they took out the flames, the Stanley Cup was still standing intact with ice still in it. Yeah. So that awesome to me, thing. that to me just shows that the, the marketing game for products is thriving. Maybe we could say whatever we want about the entertainment industry and how they market people and how they market things. But when it comes to productivity or products, generally, we are in the golden age. And that's why Craft Tea is going to be the greatest <laughs> company in the world someday. Let them know. Well, well, this, is, this is the episode for talking to the camera. All y'all need is colors, <laughs> eh? All no, you no. need is colors, eh? I'm just kidding. But no, that's, that's what's been going on with the company. I feel like that's just kind of like an astonishing amount of turnaround that you can have with just one person Simple in marketing. Yeah. You know, just coming in with a, a brilliant strategy and then the company just doing phenomenal. So that's been going on. Um, I want to switch gears a little bit. Um, shout out to the switching gears guys, by the way. Um, <laughs> I want to switch gears and I, I want to ask you guys some questions, man. I've, I've been having some, you know, I've been having some... Because, you, you know, like you think about these things from time to time, but I was in this past week and I was thinking to myself, who are the most respected celebrities of all time? And why do you think that is? Just in your personal opinions. I want to hear. Off top, Denzel. Denzel Washington? Off top, Denzel. Talk about it. We don't know nothing about him other than he has a child and he has a wife for 40 years. Adam Bridger? And he's an incredible actor. Now that I think about it, I've never heard a negative news about Denzel in my life. No. Ever. No, I don't think so. Even just, Barack Obama has more haters. Hundred percent, crazy. A hundred, no, but Denzel, he's been in since what the seventies, eighties, probably eighties. I think yeah, maybe 80s? even the seventies. Yeah, I'm not he's, too sure when he started, but he's I been think, around. Yeah, they, he's, been around. he's been on a run since, mm-hmm. and it's not like he comes out with movies every year to this day, but his movies, like old characters, are still. Recently, I was talking about Training Day. And I was talking about that compared to him in uh, He Got Game and things like that. No, but that's all we... People, that's what ruined Will... I don't mean to go back to Will Smith. But that's what ruined Will Smith is we learned too much about him. Too much information ruins the a mystery. So we believe more the character than we, we do about the person. No, but I, Denzel and Samuel Jackson are the two I'm going to start with. That are just on a 40, 50 year run and we know nothing else but their like incredible track record of movies. Mine is Will Ferrell. Will mm, Ferrell. That's a good one. Because I, I, I don't know a lot of people that hate that man. Like, no. You just, and you just know him, you see him on screen, makes you laugh, disappears for five years. And just, well, you know? always a goofy character. <laughs> <laughs> like, great. Yeah. And the second one is Rob, Ryan Reynolds. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, don't know, I don't know anybody that hates him. I think there's he's, a community of I people think he's that loved by the masses. Like I think is he the guy from Deadpool? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people that hate him. Hate? Yeah. I don't think hate. No, I don't I think know. There's a lot of people are not a fan of him, but I think there's more people. When people, when you Google Ryan Reynolds, there's more love. There's more articles about how uh, how much of a good person he is, rather than all the controversy. That Who's the did. other Ryan that always Ryan Gosling? Ryan Gosling. That's the guy who always gets confused. Right, right, right. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, apparently that guy was a bully growing up, eh? How did you know that? How do you know? He was a bully on Barney. <laughs> somebody, somebody came out. Somebody came out. Because like, he obviously he was a handsome guy growing up. So then he used to bully the. Why is that obvious? Because he's one of the most handsome people in the industry. Is he? Yeah. Is he? Really? You think so? Not me. I'm just saying what people think. Do you have a poster at home? But not I'll me. just say it. <laughs> your lock screen. Can I, let me see your lock screen right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying all this high praise uh, about him, man. I was more of a Rihanna person for rest of the Yeah, uh, okay, okay. But back to back to what I was saying, like, he used to bully the unattractive niggas around him. <laughs> Apparently, like, there was oh, one yeah. guy who came up and was like, I used to get bullied by his girlfriend and me. <laughs> he was on Barney, though. <laughs> he was on Barney? That's where he started? He was on a lot of these, a couple of them were on Barney. I, that's what's so confusing. This is Ryan Gosling, right? Yeah, yeah, Gosling. I know he is, but I'm saying you don't know what he's like after Barney. <laughs> you know, you don't Post know Barney, he, right? Yeah, you don't know what <laughs> No, but who's, who else is on US? You said Gosling, Ryan Farrell. Uh, not Gosling. No, Ryan Farrell Reynolds. and uh, what's the other? Gos- uh, Reynolds. I would, I would, I would even slip in Morgan Freeman. No. Why not? It's a few, or is it last year, two years ago, it's coming out some allegations about him and women. What? Yeah. 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 Really? That's what I was like. I hopped off that. I was like, nope. I did not hear this. Mm-hmm. He's a, Wow. Apparently, he's a creepy old man. That's, that's what's okay. been said. Okay, I did not know that. I yeah. take that back. I did not hear about this. I would have said Kevin Hart, like twenty fifteen. <laughs> what happened since then? <laughs> like you know, you know when the media builds you up, mm-hmm. like yeah. you are the media's the face of everything. Darling. Like everybody loves you. Mm-hmm. But then his Twitter thing came out, you know, where he was gonna host either the Oscars or the Grammys, the Oscar. and apparently that was his dream. Mm-hmm. And then there was a there was a tweet that came out like way in the past, like him saying. I would prefer if my son was not X, Y, and Z, right? And then that had a lot of people are like, we don't want this person here. And that started kind of like the like the downfall of media wise. Kevin Hart's still up here. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, he's still respected. Yeah, but like in terms of like he found out that he cheated on his wife. Like what? he found out He cheated on his wife? Yeah. No way. Yeah, apparently. Oh damn. Uh, I didn't know about then, this. I, <laughs> he's surprised. I did yeah. not know about this. I thought he was just a Years great ago. guy, you know? I thought he's been <laughs> with Didn't his... he cheat like didn't he cheat on his ex-wife with his current wife and marry his current wife? I have wife? no idea. No, we don't. We don't I have know no that, clue. Though. That's that's what I've been. The allegation was that, but they make it clear. No, like I, we separated by the time me and this girl. Got right, I'm just saying. I'm just so saying. We don't know. But the point I'm making is, at one point he was loved, and now mm-hmm. I can't really say that about him. Okay, let me throw out another name, Tom Hanks. Sir, sure. any dirt on his name? No, not me. He's a respectable guy. His kids, his son running around. I think his son is me. hilarious, bro. <laughs> I love his. What's son. on? What's his he son? just goes around with the Jamaican accent? The Ch- Ch- Hanks? <laughs> yeah. You never heard Ch- Hanks? No way. The Patois? No way. Tom no. Hanks has a son that's acting Jamaican. Yeah, yeah. well, I think that guy me. I think it's, it's a flush. It's not a, it's a wrinkle though. No, it's not. We well, we know nothing about Tom Hanks other than his son running around with Patois. That's, fine. that's all I need. No. Interesting. I didn't know he had. I didn't know he had kids that were relevant. But mm. I'll throw two more at you, yeah. and then I guess we can wrap up. The Rock. One. Excuse me. The Rock. Uh, love. No, yeah. you can't. Bro, he ruined DC. <laughs> well, as an actor, obviously, I'm just talking about the person. I'm no. talking about as a celebrity. Fam, the, we're not talking about their body of work, fam. No, we're no, talking no. about as a celebrity. Do people uh, what I'm saying is, them? there's a gr- a large group of superhero fans that despise that man. Fuck those nerds, bro. Who the fuck cares no, what they think? The, there's also some, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, but some I, serious shit, though, that apparently a lot of people from Hawaii, whatever, I think the volcano erupted, and people are on him and Oprah's behind about it, hmm. about how they, certain ways they handled that situation, and how they, so yeah, that's that's the wrinkle on him of late. I did not know that. I've, been, yeah. I've just been thinking The Rock's just been the most respected guy ever. I mean, his, his movie his movie roles have been terrible to me, and that's definitely a discussion to have. But as a man, I would always th- I've always thought that people just looked up to him. No. Really? Especially, I think he is... What did he do wrong, though? Aside from that, mm-hmm. what did he do that took people's respect? Like the contract. Remember we were talking about it on the nice episode. Like, he has a contract where he can't be punched more than the main person, or, like, people... When people see, like, he's so in his... I'm not saying I'm saying this, but what people are saying is like he's so up in his head, like he wants to always be the number one. I don't know, man. That just sounds like that sounds way. like they're just that sounds like the natural hate that comes but, with being respected. No, I disagree. I disagree. Give me some reasonings. If you are constantly asking for this and asking for that, people are going to call you a diva, and that's what he is. He's, he is a ma- he is a ma- male diva. 
Like I he wants things heaven. a specific way. And if it's not done that way, why doesn't he deserve it? Why doesn't he deserve it? Yeah. Because why can't he be humble and just take what life gives him? I don't know where humbleness came from. It's just it's it's his right as an actor. He's served so many roles. He's had so much longevity in the game. Regardless, the point the, the whole conversation is he is he loved by the community or is he not? And I think I'm, he, what I'm I, saying I, is I there's a large there's more people that like Ryan Reynolds than like no, I, I disagree. disagree. Yeah, I disagree, disagree heavily. No, no, I think no. The Rock what is What I'm loved. saying is Ryan Reynolds, I think is more loved than The Rock. No. I disagree heavily no. on that. That's crazy. This, uh, That's you're, blasphemy. The Rock these days? You're, why, there's why, so why, much why? scrutiny around his name. I've never once heard one bad thing about The Rock. Ever. I don't know what social media you're on. You're nitpicking at his contract. Bro, if you Google right now The Rock controversy, you're going to get Articles. That's it. Go ahead, bro. It's articles. <laughs> I want to see it. Like, Yo, the, I want to see it. Like, you're in such a niche community. To be honest with I you, I disagree with that. Because The Rock comes from WWE, and that's a whole monster of uh, other audience that probably don't. We don't know how much movies, Ryan Reynolds movies they watch, but that's a whole other audience that's in that fighting world sure. that loves that. And now that WWE and UFC, he is, yeah, I get it. He's and, a WWE yeah. fighter who is really popular. Mm-hmm. People have him on their Mount Rushmore. Speaking of WWE, you guys know it's Netflix? going to Netflix? Yeah, I've seen it. That's some shit, though. $10 billion or something. Bro, the man has zero controversy. The one thing that I keep seeing about Traffic, him is the, the thing in, in Maui. Mm-hmm. But he has zero controversies, bro. What you're just, you you're talking shit about this, this guy. No reason. Yo, what did you Google? I, like, wrote, I literally Googled the rock You don't see the DC stuff? Nigga, you just opened the first one. Scroll <laughs> down, bro. <laughs> bro, do you, not see, do you not see all the ones I'm, I'm going through? Do you see one thing about DC, fam? Fam, you're... Bro, stop putting that's, smut that's on the you, man's name, bro. <laughs> no, stop putting smut on the man's name. That's, yo, you're, Nobody you're, cares about his fab. DC roles. That's cap. That's <laughs> really? cap. He, fab, he's the reason why there's a new wave of DC. They they changing everything. Like, bro, they, that's so irrelevant. No one well, they're cares. building it around him now? Bro. Nobody no, cares about that. He was like, it's because of him yeah. that now they're going to a new age of DC. And now they, like, they're getting a new, like Henry Cavill is no longer coming back. Um, the Who's Flash that? person, Superman, the Man okay. of Steel. Yeah. Like, that was the face of DC for a long time. You know? But but he's in the early 2000s, though? Who? I'm just that taking Superman. In. Is he yeah, right now Superman? He's been Superman for a while. Mm-hmm. He's been Superman for a while. He's like, when somebody, when I, especially in my generation, when I think of Superman, I think of Henry Cavill. And that guy's never coming back for the role. Damn. Because of him? Yeah. I don't know. I think The Rock deserves to be on that list. I mean, you, you took out Morgan Freeman because he had allegations, but you took out The Rock because he's not a good actor? No, because... One, I'm just talking about where does the respect fall off, bro? Yo, I wish I, I've never I'm telling you, right I'll, now. I'll give you an example okay. of what I'm trying to say. I don't, I don't really like superhero movies, yeah. That doesn't sway my judgment on the actors in them, bro. Do you know how large of a community the DC community is? Yeah, I'm not saying that there's not Marvel, many people, I'm not saying, I'm just saying that that's not a relevant, that's not a relevant so. reason to hate somebody. I'm not, not, I'm not saying th- th- this whole conversation is talking about is he loved, yeah. I, I don't say, I don't think he's loved as much anymore. If this was 2020, I would have been on your side. I disagree though, because there's so much people it's who know The Rock. But I'm saying there's so just... much people who know The Rock that are just not interested in those movies. No. That still love him. But there's a niche community of people that love those movies that hate the fact that he's in them. Okay. And that brings his, let me, his respectability let me, down. Let, let, me, let, me, let me tell you something. The Rock, there was a certain point where he used to come out with a movie every year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where's that movie? Where's the 2023, 2024 movie? What are you trying to? What, point what I'm trying to say, he's not as marketable as he used to be. No, but and why do you that's think so crazy? That. He's been in the game for. T- he's that. slowing down because no. he's older, fam. First of all, he's been in the. His, he's been in the Hollywood big, for so long. First of all, his big break, like when people started considering The Rock to be a, like one of the big actors, 2007. <laughs> what, movie was what movie was he in 2007? What movie was he in 2007? That was up. good enough to be in the box office. Let me pull it up. What's wrong with this guy, bro? You're telling I'm me he didn't come on the that. scene in 2007? I'm not saying he wasn't on the scene. I'm saying when did he become the face of Hollywood? Fast and Furious. The, he wasn't that the was, face of Hollywood. Not 2007, though. No, I'm saying that's when he became the face of Hollywood. But he got onto the scene in 07, right off the bat. Just because you're on the movie. scene doesn't make you relevant. He was, bro, was that he Scorpion? had a huge name coming from the WWE. No. He translated he, to he, Hollywood he, immediately. No, he didn't. He was on The Mummy. In the mummy, he was given that so opportunity by know him there? P- being known and being given opportunities are two different things. Really? Justin Bieber is known. If he became an actor right now, do you think he would get a lot of opportunities? Yeah. No, he wouldn't. A whole lot. He's, He's just not a Bieber. He would get you get poppy yeah. type movies. He wouldn't get the serious. That's, that's the Rock the did thing. too, though. The Rock stayed in the niche lane. 
for so long, he was just the guy, the big buff guy fighting in every movie. And then he got onto the Fast and Furious type of shit and he just excelled from there. Yeah. He didn't translate. He didn't go into like... Actually, this thing was the early 2010s though. I'm just saying, bro, The yeah. Rock is a respectable celebrity. He's sure. one of the most respectable celebrities. I disagree. To you, not to me. <laughs> like, I, I, yeah, whatever you want. <laughs> it's all personal opinion at the end of the day. But I'm just saying that I don't see what you're saying. Okay, cool. But I'm, what I'm saying, saying is the, the, the Maui thing, the DC thing, there's a large population of people who don't see him the same way as what we used to see him as. You know, and if you still see him that way, that's awesome. But I'm saying a lo- that, that it went from him being a perfect in the eyes of, the, of everybody to him having now like darkness around his name. I don't know, man. I just don't see that as dark. Because what you said about Kevin Hart makes sense. What you said about Morgan Freeman makes sense. But this is a character attribute of his, his filmmaking. Like that to me, just it doesn't hold weight. He ruined an industry. Like, how it do doesn't you, hold. How do you not see that as big? I never even heard. He somebody... is worth a billion dollars, and he single handedly is the reason why they're going a new direction. I don't know if that holds a lot of weight, bro. I, I just don't see a <laughs> lot of people talking about that. They didn't have a. Their era hasn't started. They weren't that what, big of the last years. No, but he, he just, The Rock wanted, yeah, Black Adam to be the new thing, in. To that point, that's why he even brought Henry Cavill back. Like, Henry Cavill was on, like, a Netflix show. Mm-hmm. And he wasn't ever going to come back for Superman. But he was able to pull some strings, bring Henry Cavill back. And then um, he was, like, snippet of the movie at Black Adam at the end. Like, at, it's going to be, like, a part two of Black Adam where it's going to be, like, Black Adam versus Superman, you know? And then after that, people, like, the whole whole community was up in like this big discussion and then they ended up canceling the whole thing in the first place and henry cavill because of that is never coming back as superman and he, that was a lot of people left to begin with though you said pardon he left already no but he was coming back like he he was shown as a snippet to be in part two of black adam part, in his mind said yeah this is not me worth my return okay let me just go back to where i was doing what do you mean he left once saying yo i'm done but with he this. came back he was came back said okay let's see what the story is gonna be Let's see how the audience sees it. Who knows if in his mind he was going to come do a part two Brother, if the first one succeeded. Part one ended with Henry Cavill coming back with the idea of part two being Black Adam versus Superman. Obviously, he was going to come back for part two. I don't know. Okay. Why would you, why would you show of, a teaser and not do part two of the movie? This, this conversation, I'll give you an example of what I mean by I don't make I don't see the sense in what you're saying. Sir? It, this sounds like the people that are outraged, this is the metaphor I'm using. This sounds like the people that are outraged that Taylor Swift is a fan of the Chiefs and she's ruining the game. That's what you guys are saying to me right now, pretty much, in a nutshell. That's the comparison I'm taking how, from this. How, how would you compare that? The Rock isn't doing anything wrong at all. No, no moral judgments in question at all. Mm-hmm. He's just doing his job. But people are mad. Because he did it wrong. Did Taylor Swift ruin an, an NFL team? Well, that's what people are saying. <laughs> no, that's didn't. what people are saying. No, people are saying they, people. People are saying that, and there's a huge community of people nah. saying this, saying that Taylor Swift dating Travis Kelsey is is hurting the team. That's not even comparable. That's how. That's, that's how even. baffling it there's sounds. There's a difference to me. between The Rock ruining a, a, a franchise than Taylor Swift just showing up to games. How? Because one, she's actually giving them a lot of marketability. She's bringing money. Isn't The Rock doing the same thing? I don't. Th- I said that to you earlier. I don't think he's as marketable as he used to be in the past. Because of that, be- yeah, a lot, a lot of that. That's where I just I, tell me a movie that he's coming out with. I don't watch The Rock's movies, man. I'm talking about him <laughs> as a celebrity. Why people would disrespect? But he's a celebrity him. because of his Hollywood movies. It's not like he's I a celebrity he's more, for just existing. I, I think the more people, more people respect and revere Rock yeah. because his physique, his uh, philanthropy, his activism, his uh, commitment to the children. Like, there's so much reasons to respect this guy. You're not giving me one thing to break one of those. I told you two. You just talked about the acting. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's in the community. But I'm telling you his job. I'm telling you there's controversy about him at his job. I'm not talking about I'm him not, as a person. My point against that is that that's not relevant to break his, his character for the public. I disagree with that because now he's not as marketable. He's not getting as many, like, he would have been on so many different movies. So what do you think is going to happen to The Rock now? Well, I'm sure. Uh, Where do you think this is going to lead? I think he's going to take a break and come back eventually. Because right now he just needs a little downtime because a lot of people hate him. And he's going to come back like, hey, I missed The Rock. And he's going to be given that role. You're the only one that hates him, fam. <laughs> he can move. 
<laughs> You're the only one that hates the man. Like, I'm telling you right now, you did it. I don't even know what Google you're on, but if you just search the rock controversy, a lot that, of stuff are going to come up. I don't want to be on the end of the day. That, that's a, that is a big community, and yeah, they can feel how they feel. Yeah. Like, if a very big Sally was here, you probably share your I think anybody shitting yeah. on there would agree with me. He was a, he I think said, Nice not, would agree not, with me. I'm not disagreeing I think, with you. I'm just saying that's not that relevant. That's not going <laughs> to hurt his character that as much as you're saying it will. But it's it's the okay. I don't want to stay on this for too long. But it's the idea, like I keep saying, it's the idea of him thinking he's bigger than the, like the whole thing. I don't think he does because now now companies are seeing. Do I really want somebody who would be a diva that I have to care for in that way? Because the way that he did such a million billion dollar franchise like DC, do I really want that to happen to mine? Do I want The Rock to be the face of my company? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Man. That's I how think, I, think I think a lot any, of people are looking. I, I think any company, especially a movie pre- uh, executive that's inquiring for The Rock, are holding their fingers, desperately saying, please sign, please sign, no matter what. I'm no, saying there's less than before. That's what I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> like, you can, you can make, you guys speaking from two different sides of the plate. Like, yeah, he, agree, agree superhero movies, not, uh, sorry. Not superhero fan, superhero fan. You guys are speaking from two different sides. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it from the public is, perspective. Right? You're looking at it from the media's perspective. No, yeah. saying, that's what I'm talking there's about. Less, what I'm saying is there's less roles for him now because of how DC ended. That's we my whole we don't know what that man's doing now. That's, that's, sure. that's why I disagree But I'm saying he's not, he, he in the media's eye right now compared to before. But I used you, to see him you get day. to a certain time where as an actor, you're right after probably, the DC controversy though. Huh? Right after the DC controversy. That's not like... I, I agree with you in a sense where that community may have been hurt by what he's doing to that franchise. I get what he's saying was that's not the whole industry. You can't say that for one community, he ruined a movie franchise. If he did something like there's a big controversy, like that's what I liked where he said Morgan Freeman has an actual allegation. What the fumble? <laughs> allegation there. But him was just some movie choices and I get, yeah, he's being a diva for the type of contractual things they put. Like Kat saying, oh, the thing, what's his name? Ricky Smiley can't be in a movie with me unless he's in a dress. Contractual uh, piece of shit move, both of them. But you can't say that's the entire industry that's not willing to put money into The Rock because he ruined the franchise to the fans. I'm saying it bleeds into other things, brother. You can't I'm saying see. people see. I don't think it does. If but that's people, where I disagree. I, that's I agree to disagree. Okay, I'll leave yeah. it. I, I I will change my mind when you tell me what big in like which big movie he's gonna be in soon. Because right no now, no changing minds, fam. This is opinion <laughs> based. This is opinion based. No, no, no. Based. What I'm, I'm saying looking is, at it from the perspective of does, do kids still want to grow up and be like The Rock? And you're looking at it from perspective of is he going to be this huge Hollywood titan from now on? That's, I, that's, that's a different era, though. I don't think kids are looking at The Rock the same way the WWE fans and early on Fast and Furious fans are looking at The Rock. I think he's a that's why he older guys, different era. I don't think it's the same thing because we partially we grew up on the Rock from WWE, right? And partially we seen him in other things other than this guy that stepped on the floor and Fast and Furious and the floor splits, right? And we can call bullshit on that, but right. we're yeah, the kids are we're in the Kai Sinat streamer Twitch, right? Video game era. We're in a different era that people are not looking at. And I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. You guys are both right. Nobody's wrong in this conversation. Like I said, it's just a matter of opinion. I just think that what you're saying to me doesn't hold that much as much weight. Okay. You know, and that's where I agree to disagree. So, okay. To me, I th- I still think The Rock is one of the top uh, respected celebrities. If you think otherwise, that's cool. Yeah. But just saying, man, The Rock is he's a gold fan. Not right. But he he has a lot of. I'm not saying his resume isn't great. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying it's not. Just saying, you know what I mean? I'm just saying. <laughs> what, did, what, what was so bad about that movie, Black Atlas? Did you guys watch it? I haven't watched it. Did you watch it? I thought it was a, it was a good movie. And the only thing was like the after effects. Like he was like, it's going to be about me now. No, but what then, was the movie about? Like what was about wrong Black about Adam. the movie? Um, He changed the character okay. to make it more The Rock. What do you like, mean? You know how The Rock is a character? Yeah. Like he kind of plays the same role. Mm-hmm. You know, in movies, pretty much, he he changed the character of Black Adam to who make it more to be him. You know, who's Black Adam? Like Black Adam's supposed to be like an like an antihero. He's not supposed to be a villain. He's supposed to be like a villain, right? So like he kind of trans- John Cena type shit. Hmm? Like you know, Peacemaker. Oh, I haven't watched that movie. No, no, no. no. He's an anti villain. Yeah, yeah. He's an anti hero, sure. but yeah. he does whatever it takes to be right. 
No, but I think I think Black Adam is more of a villain that has good moments. You know, like compared that? to Peacemaker, who is I will stick with my values even if it means I'm going against the public opinion. Right. Like if I give Peacemaker a mission, mm -hmm. he will complete it even if he has to kill you to do it. Right. You know, but Black Adam has moments of being good, but he tried to reprise that role to be like a good person the entire way. Yeah, and it's like you're changing the character, you're changing like. You think that's kind of made him more about his brand. It made him more about like character. it's he wants yeah. DC to be the Rock. Yeah. You know, he wanted to rival Marvel with the Rock. It didn't want to be Marvel versus DC. It was Marvel versus the Rock. You know, mm -hmm. and then people didn't like that. Gotcha. I'll just say this, bro. Let the Rock rock. We'll leave it at that. Let's leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. Let's leave it at that. Leave it at that. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching another episode of the Coffee Break Podcast. I'm your host with the most, and these are my brothers. Jama. Ilo. If you haven't already, please like, share, subscribe. We're back once a week, everybody, to give you guys these great episodes. So we'd very much appreciate it if you guys can give us some feedback down below. Check us, check us out on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, soon Twitter. Soon Twitter. X. X. <laughs> Formerly known as Twitter. We, we call it. It's like Ryerson and, and what is it called? Metropolitan. Right, right. Like, <laughs> we, we ain't acknowledging that for another five, yeah. six years, right? Like, come on, man. That's not our era. But check us out. We have a lot to offer you guys. We're we on streaming as well. So streaming as well. Just to stream. Everywhere you can catch your audio streams on your, on your podcast, Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, you name it. We'll see you guys next week. Gang. Peace.